giving you five litres of the ST5, which is the heat transfer fluid that's got glycol in it, uh, propylene glycol. It's got dipotassium monohydrogen phosphate in it, which is a pH buffer, and food colouring, so it can be seen if there is a leak, you see it, and some distilled water. So it's a very a, a, a correct proportion requirement to ensure that there is no frost damage done to the system. So the full five litres must be installed at, in every location around Australia with this uh, system. Outside of Australia, if you get to countries where temperate climates can drop well below zero for a long period of time, we, re we recommend two bottles of the heat transfer fluid. Uh, countries like South Korea, uh, Europe, so forth, it is important to ensure you protect against frost damage and two bottles in those locations is essential. Here in Australia, you can get away in most locations with one. Top of Mount Kosciuszko, I'd probably recommend two bottles up there. So at this final stage now, we're now going to put the heat transfer fluid in. As I said, we've checked everything. Everything is buttoned up tight as a drum. We're going to let this fluid drain out of it. Just potable water in there. We're going to drain it out. It's important you do it this way. You can push the fluid, the heat transfer fluid in afterwards, but it's far better to do this first and in the process I'm going to show you. Okay, I'm going to, um, I've got this still tightened up in there so that the tap's shut. I'm going to release it from here now. Uh, just as a matter of interest, if there was some problem that you didn't want all this fluid just running st straight out onto the roof, you can remove the connection to the PTR valve and let that hose run over the roof, drop it over the roof onto something else and drain it back into uh, or away from the roof if you wanted to. But I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to tighten this up, I'm going to release this um, uh, clear tube now. So I've taken the hose off and now I'm just letting it dump out. Now one of the things it won't do too fast is because I've still got to plug at the top of it there and it's sealed up. Eventually I'm going to pull a vacuum on that, so this is important as another test to make sure that you have got it nicely sealed. You see how that's drained and now stopped? Well that means it's actually pulled a vacuum in there and you've got no air getting in there so no water will get out. So I'm going to go back up to the hot con in a minute and I'm going to undo that Filmac plug right on the top of the hot con and once I release that and open that up you'll see this uh, force out come out really fast. But this is a real final test to make sure you've got a nice sealed system. Okay, so I'm just undoing this Filmac connection at the top here now. Remember we've got a vacuum that we've pulled on here. So any minute now we're going to start seeing, we're going to, we're going to see that just come running out of there now. See so it's starting to dribble, air's getting in through the top here and it'll just dump out really fast. There we go. So that's going to run out now. That'll take a minute or two to drain it all out. Open up that tap all the way if you can, making sure that you've got it fully open. I probably don't, I could pull that, open that little plug a little bit more, the tap up a little bit more on there. But, um, there we go, you see if you open it too far you can pull that spring out. So just make sure you take it to a point where you're getting a good flow like that. Don't overdo it. Nothing worse than to see that run down the gutter into your uh, the roof into your gutter, is there? Okay, the last thing, last job now, we're just going to put our heat transfer fluid in, as you can see in this uh, five litres red bottle. Um, the contents of this is um, uh, propylene glycol. Uh, please, you must ensure that you only put into this system the requisite uh, product that we supply. You can't use bars, leaks, anything like that has ethylene glycol in it and it's, and it's very toxic. Propylene glycol is food grade, used in a wide range of the food industry, baby formula, food, all sorts of things, very safe, very safe. In the concentration levels we put in, and the other products that we put in there with it is the only ingredients you can put inside this system because in case of, of any breach between the potable water side and the closed circuit side, we don't want any other substances getting into the, into the water supply system. So I'm gonna go through now and show you this and make sure that you are fully aware of it. As you can see, our system is now uh, stopped running. We've got all our fluid out of there. It's completely dry again. So, we're going to remove our lid from the, the top of the bottle. You can see there's, a, there's a, a usual child safety catch on there to make sure that, the, um, that nobody opens it up and put any other contaminants in there, first of all. This has come from a, 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 a quality control factory that we buy from. We don't actually make this chemical ourselves, but we buy it and it's under licence uh, and used for, only for this type of uh, application. We've got here is a, uh, a little pump called a, um, a Pelican pump. Um, 
you've probably seen some of these around. They're, uh, they're used for uh, uh, things like hand lotions and stuff. So we're going to just open that up, make sure that we got that open, put it inside the our bottle, and now connect that with the hose that already we've supplied in the kit. And we're going to pump it into now. Make sure you again just make sure that's open because it's a bit tough forcing it through a partly closed uh, tap in there. So we're going to start uh, putting that in. As you can see now it's coming in. The reason we're putting this in now is is the content of the total content of the closed circuit in the system is um, is 15 or 16 litres thereabouts. And we want to now put after we pump this in, we want to put in more potable water to mix it all. It's pretty important if you're in a very frost, uh, you're in a frost area, you're doing a job like this in the middle of winter and uh, at, we're quite late at night now as you can see getting into the afternoon, it starts to drop in temperature pretty quickly. So if you had a cold snap that night and it wasn't circulated properly because it hadn't hadn't reached or hadn't been any around sun and there was no sun and no energy in the thermosiphon action that kicked in, you could find that your collectors have got partially mixed heat transfer fluid and that could cause the problem that we're trying to prevent because then you would get a spotting frost or fr freezing in some of the areas of the collector. So it's important that you mix it properly like we're going to show you now. So putting this in, it's pretty simple. Most of you guys got an apprentice, this is what they design apprentices for. Get them to do this job, it's a really good idea. Now I'm just about at the end of it, I want to just lean that over. Make sure you get as much out as possible, it's important to put the full content in. Don't try to, don't try to cheapen the job out by not putting enough in there. Okay, we're just about at the end of it now. I, I don't think it's going to make a great deal more to put it in. So finally we're just going to close that off. We don't want to um, run that out in the roof. Now just a, a word of caution here. One of the problems that we've experienced over many years of using closed circuit uh, systems is drain down. It's the, it's, it stops the product working correctly, of course, if you don't have the, the correct content of fluid in there. But the glycol itself, whilst it's not a, uh, a, a contaminant of any sort, if it does get into a, onto the roof and then into the gutters, and if you've got rainwater uh, systems, it can be uh, a problem. It will. Uh, drain down into, it could drain down into the rainwater tanks. Uh, it, there's a, a level of bacteria, even in the purest of water, it will kill the bacteria, it will go off, you'll smell a rotten smell and taste and all that. Can't be, it, it won't do you any harm, but you've got to scrub your tank out and do it. So be very careful. What we do recommend is, if you are on rainwater, if you can at all possibly do it, make sure that the gutter that this is uh, is working to is somehow closed off, that you don't get any problems associated with uh, excess spillage into and into uh, uh, water tanks. Now it's not a problem if you're not using that water to drink, if it's just uh, water that's just going to run out onto it, but any excess running out onto the roof, uh, if it gets into that could be a bit of a problem, so make sure you clean it up. If now I'm going to pull that off, just, just make sure that you don't just let it run onto the roof, okay? Clean it up, wipe it up straight away, hold that up, and uh, away you go. Shouldn't be a problem. Right, so now we've got this closed off. We'll put our glycol in there, so four, five litres of glycol. We're going to put our hose back on now and mix it. So we've still got another about uh, another uh, 11 or 12 litres of fluid to put in there now. This is the correct ratio, which will work with our system. Tighten that up. Open this up again. see that's starting to run out a bit, that's not a problem. We'll fill that back and push it back up in there now. Okay, so your hose is still connected, your fill hose is still connected, your PTR valve, the expansion vessel connection's off here so we're going to have water coming out of there and away we go. It's running back up into there now. You can see that it's just dribbling out a little bit out, out the front here, so I'll just close that off to make sure that that's uh, closed up a little bit, because as I said, if you pull it out too far, you run the risk of it jumping out. We're going to see a mix of the fluid coming through, and we're starting to see a bit of pink come out of here. That's, that's how we know that we've mixed it around a little bit. As I said, it's important. Not so much today, we're not going to get any frost tonight. Tomorrow will be a nice sunny day, we'll get a nice bit of mixing, so it's going to be all right. But if you're in a location where that night could be a frost or a freeze, you do not want it so it's not mixed. You want to mix it nicely. Just 
just keep your hand on the on the um, PTR valve stem here to make sure that it um, when you start seeing it come out, you don't get, doesn't get too excited and run all over the place. Okay, so there you go. We've got it now. Uh, we've got the fluids at the right level. See, it's nice and pink. It's a bit diluted. We're going to close off this now at the bottom. Make sure that that's shut shut off. Okay, so we've just buttoned that up. It's nice and tight now. We want to make sure that's the case. We're going to take our fill hose off now. Undo the hose clamp, and away you go. So last two things we're going to do are back up here in the hot con now. The uh, expansion vessel, we're going to make sure we should have already tightened that up, make sure that's nice and uh, sealed. Uh, got our rubbers on there, we're just going to put that onto this. Again, we'll have a seal around there, some thread tape or some, some sealant. Okay, so we're going to seal this up. Uh, at this stage, we've got the, the final, final thing we want to do is just make sure this is nice and tight, button it up. We don't want anything expanding and losing coming out of here in case it does expand which it will we want it to expand back into the vessel at this stage here we don't want it squirting out of there because we will lose we will, will lose fluid so we want to make sure it's nice and nipped up and then nip that one up make sure you've got both of those tightened up as that will be now don't twist your hose there just make sure that it's not um, too twisted which that one is a little bit okay don't forget this, the rubbers underneath there so that they seal, they've got good face sealing so it doesn't depend on the threads either. There's a rubber face that seals itself up. And then uh, on the on the Khalifi valve, we've got a, um, a plug that we've left in there during the testing process. Now it's very important that you remove that. You don't walk away from here with that left on because then you have no uh, jacket venting and no pressure control, okay? So we need to, need just to make sure that that's removed. Just stop. So as I said, this is a really critical part of this. The last thing you're going to do, but you've got to make sure that that, that uh, plug, which we've put into the, uh, the relief socket of the Khalifi valve, is removed. Okay, so that's, that's important that that comes out. Take any debris out of there, clean it out. Uh, because that valve has to open. If it gets to 100 kPa, that will open. And in your first couple of months, summer months, and your hottest days, it can expand, but generally this won't work. It will expand back into your vessel. So that's it. Just remove the, um, uh, the PTR valve. Now, keeping in mind, your PTR valve on the roof should have a drain line. It's not acceptable to have this discharge onto the roof. Although we've got, um, we've got uh, control over the thermosiphon action, uh, this is still an ultimate um, uh, last final uh, safety device uh, by discharging through over temperature or something else like the uh, an element um, whatever could cause that to go off now it's not a good thing to drop it onto a roof it'll bleach a roof uh, it can discharge down into a gutter could run over a gutter somebody underneath it could burn them badly so always make sure that there is a uh, a line run from your waist on your on your um, uh, PTR valve to a suitable uh, drain line which is uh, which is in the code. Alright finally we're just cleaning up all our stuff. Obviously we've got the pleasure of working on the ground here on a frame here on the roof so remove all the debris, the, the cover, make sure the glass is um, is nicely clean, you know, generally it comes out of a warehouse looking pretty good, but uh, give it a bit of a clean up, give it a chance, it'll get a lot of dust over the next few years, so you might have get a good start in life. Uh, finally, I've just flushed this pump out, it's a good thing to have it for future use. As I said before, be careful where you flush the waste, it's not a problem, but you can just flush it out like that. Um, <coughs> it screws up. <coughs> Okay, so we just screwed the pump back up now. We're going to put it in back into the bag, all the gear. This is important now that we keep in mind that you're either going to leave this for the customer, uh, which we prefer you to do, uh, and finish off some of the items which, um, which, are, which have been used for the job. So future use of somebody else coming out of the site can, can um, get some value out of it as well. The, um, the plugs that I've, we've spoken about, we'll put them in there. There's a push bike pump somewhere floating around here. 
We've got it around here somewhere and uh, we'll find it. And assume that that's back in there, there's your kit. <coughs> and last but not least, we've got our owner's manual. Keeping in mind, this is pretty important. The, the customer's just spent uh, you know, $4,000, $5,000 for this. They want to make sure they get all the information about it. This is their owner's manual. It's sealed up neatly, so there won't be any harm. We've already spoken about the hand covers for the um, for the uh, black ends. They're on. They're on. Fill out the information associated with the serial numbers, the date of installation, all the necessary information that we've got in the back of the of this, so it's completed for the customer. Send a copy back to us. Keep a copy for yourself. Give a copy to the customer. Okay. And uh, that's the job done, so thank you very much and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you. If you've got any questions or suggestions, we'd appreciate your comments. Thank you.